Mudi mo papa, le moro, le mo yao mo kheta. Mudi mo abata di warayi. Mudi mo arena. Mudi mo amelo ko e satan. Uwe na mo bagona, uwe ko di chunga loko. Tati lo bagona. Even this evening, Lord, we lift our hands and hearts in praise and worship. We worship you, dear Lord. You alone are worthy of our worship and adoration. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, even when we were in the state of sinfulness. You loved us in our nakedness and in your mercy you have sent your only begotten son jesus christ that through him we might have the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven we thank you for this platform through which we are reminded of your weight and your presence Moyo we can have every one of us in attendance. But go away to each man is a yako is cool. A man, Jenny, a son, or 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 a son, we pray for all things, these things, and more. Sing as bang it go into. So as bow and we are turned to present the life. For Jesus Christ and God's name. Amen. 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 Siya bonga ka kulum kone, gom kulego. Friends, we... Today we are going to look at um, 2 Samuel chapter 3 verses um, 1 to, 20, to 21. The poster uh, he was, was saying we, we will be looking at chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. And uh, I realized when I was preparing uh, this um, uh, presentation, Ogote, if I was going to do that, the Bible study would take about five to 10 minutes. So I decided to expand it to look at uh, chapter, uh, Second Samuel chapter three from verse one to 20, 21. What prompted me to look at this chapter it is because it was one of the you will remember that I, I i i asked for suggestions for presentations so osis linda uh, came up with the issue and uh, the anger and and all that i am not sure if i will be um answering her question but uh, maybe going through what this scripture is dealing with maybe the question will be will be answered so we are looking at second samuel chapter 3 from verse 1 to 21 <clears throat> um i i i i am using uh, 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 King, I mean, O Henry, uh, com Henry's commentary as a source, but I've looked at other other commentaries as well. So I decided to look at this chapter, not verse by verse, 
but uh, I will combine verses so that we get the gist of what is going on in the in this scripture. So I will combine verses like um, uh, uh, we will be do dealing with verse verses two to five. I will uh, tackle that. Then we go to verses six to seven. Then we go to uh, eight to 11. Then we go to 12 to 16. And we go to 17 to 19. The last one would be, if we have time, the last one would be 20 to 21. Now we are looking at what is, what is going on on chapter three, verse, verse two to five, which uh, talks about David's son, uh, sons born in Hebron. Uh, the, the sons of David were born in Hebron. And uh, all those verses, what they, they give us is the list of uh, the sons of David, uh, uh, as I say, who were born in Hebrew. Uh, we are told about the first son who was Amon uh, by, um, <laughs> by Ahinom, ah, Ahinoam, uh, who is the first wife of David, uh, who was also the Jezreelites. Then the second one was Chiliad, uh, who was born uh, by the second uh, wife of David, Abigail, who was the widow of Nabal, the Camelite. Then the third born was Absalom, the son of Makkah, the daughter of Tamai. That is what the the, the, those verses are telling us. Then the fourth born was Adonijah, the son of Hagith, who um, uh, then we have the fifth one, Shepita, the son of Abital. These are the, the wives. When they say the son of, uh, they, they mean the, 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 the mother. Then the sixth one was Atriam. Uh, by David's wife, Agla. Now, these were born to David in Hebron. I've said that. Um, we, we realize that uh, during David's seven years of reign in Hebrew, <coughs> his six different wives gave, gave birth to six sons. And uh, this shows that David, <clears throat> David went against God's commandment that Israelites king should not multiply wives to himself. So it, it, he went against God's command. He was not supposed to have these many wives as the king of Israel. Now, what this tells us is that David was wrong. David was wrong um, uh, to have more than one wife. He should not have had so many wives. These many wives went, even the wives, not because Sometimes we think that uh, it, it was David himself uh, who committed sin by having many wives. But um, even the wives themselves went against God's command to kings because um, uh, Deuteronomy 17, verse 17, whom we think that even the wives of, um, of David knew about this law that they should not have um, 
married to a man who is the king and uh, they, 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 they are so many, many wives. So, and it is not against this law only, even Genesis chapter four, verse, uh, verse 24. Uh, it, is, it, it was against God's heart for marriage because God's heart for marriage is about a man having one wife. Uh, we can also look at Matthew chapter 19, verse, verses 6 to verses 4 to 6. Uh, we would see that. David committed the sin by having many wives, even the wives went against God's command by marrying a man who, who was polygamous. Now, uh, this leads us to polygamy. I have said already, David was wrong to have many wives. His many wives went against God's command. I have said that. And um, you, 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 you will understand that at, at, at that time, polygamy was common. Adding many wives was one of the way great men and especially kings expressed their power and status. That was the order of the day. Now, David was troubled because of his many wives. So he was not happy because he had many wives. He was troubled. Some wonder why the Bible doesn't express, expressly condemn David's polygamy here. But as it is often the case, the scriptures simple states the fact and later records how David reaped the penalty for this sort of sin in regard to his family. So uh, it did not go well for him to have so many wives. How do we see that? Uh, we see that. Uh, when God punished, unfortunately, God punished uh, David, there were penalties for his polygamous marriage. Look at how uh, his children behaved. Um, so uh, Trump, Trump says, God was not pleased with his polygamy. So when, when we show the penalties, Trapp would say it, it is because God was not pleased by the polygamy. Now look at his children. Amnon, the elder, elder son, raped his sister, half-sister, and was murdered by his half brother. So, uh, you you know uh, what I see here is the heart heartache uh, as a result of going against what God wants. The second son, who is Chiliab, is also known as Daniel. If you read. Second, I mean, First Chronicles chapter three, verse one. The few mentions of this son indicates that perhaps he died young or he was ungodly or unworthy man. So uh, that is why there is no mention. He, he is mentioned once uh, in the whole Bible. Absalom, the third son, Absalom, the third son, murdered his half brother and led a civil war against his father, David. 
attempting to murder David. The fourth son tried to save the throne from David and David's appointed successor. Then he tried to take one of David's concubines and was executed for his arrogance. The fifth one, we can fairly assume that uh, Shafatiyah and Atriam either died young, like, uh, like um, uh, Chiliab, they died young, or were also ungodly or unworthy because they are mentioned only once in the scriptures. So this, I, um, uh, the scholars regard this as the penalty for David's polygamous marriage because he was, um, I mean, uh, for a parent to have uh, children who who behaved like this, uh, it, sh it should not be uh, something that went well for him. Now, we go now to verses seven and, I mean, verses six to seven. What we see in these verses is where Ishbosheth accuses Abina of impropriety with the royal concubine. Now, it was so um, that there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David. That is what we are told. And that Abina was strengthening his hold on the house of Saul. That is what the verse is saying. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rispa, the daughter of Aya. So Ishbod said to Abina, why have you gone into my father's concubine? And what we, we get from this is that um, Abina was strengthening, as I have said, was strengthening his hold on the house of Saul. It seemed that Abinas supported a weak man like Ishbosheth in power. So he could be the power behind the throne. That was his scheme. That is what he, he was planning to do. As time went on, he increased in strength and influence on the house of David. Now, why, that is the question. Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Isposhet accused Abina of a serious crime. This was a serious crime. Taking a royal concubine was regarded as both sexual immorality and treason at the time. So uh, what Baldwin says about this, he says to take the wife of of the late monarch. You will remember that Saul, by, by this time, Saul had already died. So Baldwin says, to take the wife of the late monarch was to appropriate his property and to make a bid for the throne. And uh, that is, that was um, the accusation. Now, it seems strange that there was a controversy over the concubine of Saul, especially because 
Saul was dead. Now, can we look at this now? I want us to observe the principle. The, this principle is even more true for Jesus and his bride. You will remember that uh, the, ch the church is Jesus' bride. And um, it is also true for Jesus himself. The church belonged to no one but Jesus Christ. And it is treason to take the, the, the bride of, of Christ as if uh, she were our own possession. Because uh, we, we have few ministers here. Uh, I remember uh, o, o Dr. Muntale used to say, uh, he does not like ministers calling members uh, they are they are people, my people, or my church, or my 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 as as we always hear people uh, trying to own uh, the members of their churches. He would say, "I don't like that because this is God's church. These are God's people." So, what I'm trying to say here, what the accusation pointed to was that Abina wanted to possess uh, the, the bride to, to Saul, even if he was dead. So by so doing, he was taking possession, um, he was taking somebody, the, the accusation was, was that he was taking some, she was, he was taking somebody's wife, even if he was dead. So what I'm saying is that uh, the church belongs to God. It, it is the, uh, the bride of Christ. Uh, it is not our own possession. Now let's move on to uh, chapter eight, verse 11. The Abin, Abinaz harsh reply because he had to reply to, to, to Ishpot, Ish, what's, what's, what's this name? Ish, Ishposhet. Ishposhet, Ishposhet, yeah. So he, he, was, he was replying to Ishposhet. Then, then Abina became very angry at the words of Ishposhet and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today, I show loyalty to the, father, to, to the house of Saul, your father, to his brother and to his friends and have not delivered you into the hands of David. And you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman. May God do to Abna and more also, if I do not do for David as the Lord has shown to him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from then to Bathsheba, and he could not answer Abinaz's weight, uh, other weight, because he feared him. That is what uh, verse eight to eleven is saying. Then Abinaz became angry, as I have said. We we aren't specifically told, but Abinaz's response leads us to believe that the accusation was false. It was not true. It is, it is possible that he was strengthening his hold 
on the house of Saul. He took the concubine as an expression of his power and, and, do, and dominance. It is more likely that because of Abna's increasing power, Ishbosheth felt it necessary to invent his accusation as a, as a reason to get rid of Abina. That was Ishbosheth's uh, plan. He was trying to take him out of power. He was trying to uh, make uh, Abina lose this power he claimed to have. Now, if, if th th that is what uh, Abina is saying, if I do not do for David as the Lord has sworn to him, Abina told Ishbosheth that he would now support David and help David fulfill what the Lord promised to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David. Now let's look at this. If Abina knew that David was God's choice for king, he had no good reason to fight against him before this. Abina is a good example of those of us. This is application of all what is going on here. Abina is the good example of those of us who know things to be true, but we don't live as if they are true. So Abina should not have, my point is that if Abina knew that David was God's choice, he had no reason to fight against him even before this. But uh, as I say, this is how we people behave. Sometimes uh, we, 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 we know things to be true, but we don't live as if they are true. Abna did not write things in joining um, David's side, but he did it for wrong reasons. Instead of joining David because Ishbosheth offended him personally, he should have joined David because he knew that David was God's choice to be the king anyway. So let's move to verses 12 to 16. Now, what we get here uh, is that David agrees to receive Abina if he will bring uh, Michal with him. Then, Abina sent mess messengers to, to David, saying, Who, whose is the lad? Saying also, make your covenant with him, and indeed my hand shall be with you to bring all Israel Israelites to you. And David said, good, I will make a covenant with you, but one thing I require of you, you shall not see my face unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. So David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife. Michal, whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred foreskins of Philistines. That is what we read in these verses. Now, Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Paltiel, the son of Laish. 
Then her husband went along with her to ba Baharum, weeping behind her. So Abina said to him, go, return, and he returned. Now let's look at what is happening here. The Bible says, David said, you shall not see my face unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter. David received Michal in marriage. Uh, we can refer back to Samuel chapter 18, first Samuel chapter 18, verse 28, 26 to 28. So, but Saul took her away in spite, I mean, to spite David. That is chapter, first Samuel chapter 25, verse, verse 44. Now he says, uh, David is saying, whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred for skins of Philistines. That is what we, we get from 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 20 to 30. And this describes how David used his unusual payment instead of dowry, Ilobola, for the right to marry the daughter of King Saul. Now, Let's look then at this, uh, uh, what is happening here. The first thing we see is that he might have said 200, but he thought better to speak with the least. That is what Trepp is saying. And um, now the, the Bible says, he said, give me my wife, Michal. I, I hope you saw that in the in the in the verses I'm referring to. Give me my wife, my wife Michal. Apparently, David was not done with adding to his collection of wives. Otherwise, he had six wives. He continued to claim uh, Michal as his wife again. He insisted on receiving Michal as his wife again for at least three reasons. And I have listed those reasons there. Uh, the first one is that David remembered that Michal was his wife in the first place. And um, uh, by, by both love and right, and that King Saul took her away as part of deliberate strategy to attack and destroy uh, uh, David. We remember that uh, when Saul uh, was chasing and, and going after David, at, at, at some time he took even his, his wife. The second reason why uh, so uh, uh, David wanted Michal uh, as his wife again, is that David wanted to show that he harbored no bitterness towards Saul's throne. And he would show this through his good treatment of Saul's daughter. The third reason was that David wanted to give himself a great claim to Saul's throne as his son-in-law. So we are for, offered those three reasons. However, distressing it was to take her from a husband who loved her most tenderly. Yet prudence and policy required that he should strengthen his own interest in the kingdom as much as possible. Now, we, we hear from the scripture where Abina is saying, go, return, and he returned. Well, this uh, shows the power uh, 
the guy had. Um, it showed uh, that he was he was really tough. This fits with the personality of Abina, as we know him throughout uh, first and second Samuel. So he, he was very tough if he can command people to come and return and all that. Now, uh, verses 19 to, I mean, 17 to 19, what we get from those verses is that Abina rallies support uh, for David among other tribes. Um, now, Abina had, had committed with the elders of Israel saying, this is what he said, in time past, you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then do it for the Lord has spoken of David saying, by the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of Philistines and the hand of all their enemies. And Abina also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. Then Abina also went to speak to the hearing of David in Hebron. All that seems good to Israel and the whole house of, Je of, of Benjamin. Now, uh, what we, we hear here is that Abina had committed with the elders of Israel. It, it, is, it, is, it is clear that this word came from Abina regarding David instead of coming from David himself. Though he was the rightful king, David not, not reign over Israel until they submitted to him freely. He never moved an inch without invitation. Now, this is an illustration of Jesus' lordship over our lives. I, I want to apply this uh, to what it says to us uh, rather than looking at the old, old Testament scriptures, but it must also apply to us. Uh, this is an illustration of Jesus' lordship in our lives. He is in fact, king of kings and lord of lords, but he chooses to exercise his sovereignty only at our invitation. Jesus does not force himself on us. It's him who, uh, who offers salvation. And uh, we, 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 we are supposed to invite him into our, in, into our hearts. Some do not invite Jesus to rule over anything. Some invite Jesus to reign over a small area like Hebron in the, in, in, in the scripture we, we, we read. Some give Jesus reign over everything. He has, he has authority over, which is everything. Now, Abina is a good example of someone who eventually surrendered to God's king. Now he wanted to influence others to also surrender to God's king. Now, uh, the Bible, uh, if, if you, you have read the verses, now then do it. There is, there is that statement, there is that phrase in, in where we are reading. Now then do it because of the word of the Lord spoke of David and because it was so right to do, this was something that should be done now. In this sense, it is very much like our commitment to follow Jesus. We should 
be told, now then do it. Now then do it. Now, Charles Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon has a wonderful sermon on, on this title, now then do it. In his sermon, he shows that the same principle of Israel's embrace of David as the king applied to our relationship with Jesus. The Israelites might talk about making David king, but they would not crown him. They might meet together and say they wished it were so, but they would not do it. It might be generally admitted that he ought to be monarch and it might even be earnestly hoped that one day he would be so, but that would not do it. Something more decided must be done. That is what Charles Spurgeon is saying. The sooner it is done, the better. He continues to, to say that. Until the deed is done, remember, you are undone. Till Christ is accepted by you as king, till sin is hated and Jesus is trusted, you are under another king. Whatever you may think of it, the devil is your master. That is very powerful. Now, uh, from these verses that we read, there is also a phrase that says, for the Lord has spoken. For the Lord has spoken. The fact that Ebina, who was the general, not a Bible scholar, knew these prophecies and the fact that he could ask the leaders of Israel to consider them means that these prophecies of David were widely known. Sadly, they were not widely respected. Most of Israelites, Israel, most of Israel was, was lukewarm and unenthusiastic in their embrace of King as David, I mean, of David as King. So, in this regard, David prefigures his great son. Jesus fulfills all manner of prophecy regarding the Messiah, yet he was rejected by all but a remnant of Israel. If we look back, is that most of Israelites were lukewarm and enthusiastic to embrace David as the king. And even um, Jesus, who is the root of David, we we learn that um, um, even people rejected him. It's only the remnant uh, of Israelites uh, that um, accepted him. Not every body embraced Jesus. We don't have a biblical record of this exact statement Ebna said, the Lord has spoken of David. We read not on that, we, 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 we read not that God has had so said in, ex, in express terms, but either Ebna had heard of such a promise made at the anointing of David by Samuel and sorry 
or else faint in his own head for his own ends. That is what Trep is saying. The last verses we are looking at are verses 20 to 21. David formally received Ebna with a fist. Here we are told that um, um, Ebna and 20 men with him came to David at Hebron. And David made a feast for Ebina. And then, uh, sorry, and the men who were with him. Then Ebina said to David, I will rise and go and gather all Israelites to my Lord, the king, that they may make a covenant with you and that you may reign over all that our heart desires. So David sent Ebina away and he went in peace. So um, what, what we, we, we hear here is that um, David made a, a, a feast for Ebina. This was David showing himself wise and, and generous towards a former adversary. A lesser man would not forgive Epina for leading an army against God's king, but David was great, wise, and generous that you may reign, that is what the Bible says, that you may reign over all that your heart desires. Ebina wanted David, David's reign to be fully realized over the people of God. So that is, that is the, the, the exposition for, for second, Samuel chapter three from verses one to, 20, to, to, to 21. And um, we, what we gather here is that, um, um, well, this is, this is all about Ebina, uh, the accusation and uh, the, the positioning of himself to take up the throne and uh, joining, um, defecting from Saul to David and uh, David um, accepting him back uh, and, and throwing a fist for him. So in short, that is all about uh, Second Samuel chapter three, verses one to 29. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure the, the question uh, Us Linda was asking has been uh, answered or what he wanted to know uh, is, uh, has been covered. Otherwise, this, this is the exposition about the, the scripture we have, we have read. Are there any, any questions? Can I make a comment in front of this? Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the exposition as you, you have elaborated on it. Uh, okay, the question that I had, it, it was, I think it was based in your, on the confusion which Ishbosheth um, accused Abna of uh, Oh, okay. I don't of, know whether of taking the concubine. Taking the concubine, yes. Oh, and of then, Saul, yeah. yes. So somehow, when I, I I read it, I was like confused. It's okay. This guy is is uh, saying you took my father's concubine, and uh, Abner yeah. uh, 
and says no i i i didn't and the way that he he replied you know and then he left um Saul's um i don't know whether i'll say Saul's regime and then joined uh, o- o david so i wasn't yeah. quite it wasn't quite clear to me whether he had done it or not because Yes, oh, now okay. when he's joining oh, 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 David, oh, I'm, I'm glad oh, you, 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 you put it nicely, oh, yes, uh, he was doing it for wrong reasons. He knew that God had anointed oh, 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 David and he was supposed to stand by David. So I wasn't sure what is the motive? Why was he still uh, holding on to Saul's side? when he already knew which he, this was uh, God's will. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, what I see here uh, 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 is, is the scheme by Ebna. You, you, you realize that he wanted to ascend the throne uh, and uh, Ishbosheth was counteracting that. He was saying no. In fact, he made a scheme because he falsely accused uh, Abina of of taking uh, the, the the Saul's concubine, so that uh, he must be regarded as. Um, uh, I mean, that, that that was a crime, a serious crime of treason. So he knew that once he accused him of taking Saul's concubine, he is out of the throne immediately. Also, he was shifted, he actually shifted the focus from his uh, wrongdoings again. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. That's right. I, I get it now. Sorry, um, okay, I'm, I'm not sure. Did you read, is, is this the whole chapter? Because I believe no, it's not. When... It's not the whole chapter. I oh, yeah, I ended yeah. at twenty one. Uh, the 21. chapter goes on to thirty nine, I think. Yeah, because then other people uh, were angry that David had um, received Uabna and they killed him. Yeah, he was killed. Oh. Yeah, he was okay. killed. Okay. Oh, um, well, I. <laughs> because of time, I I I I I thought I should just stop at at best. Verses, 21. Uh, verses 21. If we, okay. we feel we should continue with the whole chapter, we, we can do that next time. Yes. But yes. because if I were to deal with um, the whole chapter, I thought maybe we will not have uh, time for questions no. and comments. Yes. Uh, uh, otherwise, it, it goes on to... Uh, Joab met you because uh, Ebna was murdered by Joab, and uh, mm-hmm. it uh, talks about um, that incident where Joab is murdering Ebna. It talks about David renouncing Joab's evil mm-hmm. evil murder of 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 Ebna. Mm-hmm. He was not happy that uh, Joab murdered uh, Ebna. Then it goes on yes. talking yes. about um, uh, so many things. So if we want to take it to the last uh, uh, verse, we can do that. Thank you. Okay, yes. Yeah, yes, I'm going. Yes, yes, yes. Brothers and sisters, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, thank you so much uh, for tackling this passage, Mukuluwa, and uh, in, in the manner that you did. I, I would like to make a few analogies and parallels uh, on this scripture. Uh, Perhaps even dealing with some of the questions that you 
you have raised. Uh, but I want to start uh, from, from towards the end, I think going backwards a bit. Um, verse 14, uh, David then saying, give me back my wife, Michal, for I bought her with Michael. my life. Yeah. Uh, Michal, or Michal, no? Michal, yes. Um, and I, I brought her with uh, the four skins of, of uh, 100 um, uh, Philistines. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take it and, and try and go back a bit, uh, carrying this as a prize. Uh, does it not answer uh, the question around the first <clears throat> four verses from two to five, where David now enlarges himself with marrying uh, more and more and more women. I want to submit first that uh, Mikai was David's first uh, formal wife. And if yes. if we go back to to the to the point uh, where David got to get Mikai, uh, he was yes. still a young shepherd. Uh, coming to to offer food to his brothers, but he found that uh, in in the battlefield facing Goliath, uh, Saul had promised that anyone who kills this Philistine, uh, I will give them uh, my daughter for a wife, but also the kingdom. So, yes. so David killed. Uh, Goliath and mm -hmm. uh, and the his the, the soldiers of Israel under Saul then then killed the other men. He collected yeah. um, more than a hundred uh, of their foreskins to present them as evidence that Goliath is has been killed and uh, was offered Mikai as a wife. And that that but that was the that was the dowry. Yes, um, well, he he may have not even been thinking of Ilobola, but uh, firstly, <laughs> the father promised the daughter. So David was not even uh. interested in, in finding a wife, but now... Uh, oh, yes, he, yes. He has, he has delivered and was given a wife, but later... Uh, Saul changed his mind uh, mm. and took back his daughter. And you can now imagine a man who has had to learn to be in love with somebody. For the first time, he, he has this kind of relationship with a woman. And, and just when he is getting into the honeymoon mode, the wife mm. has been removed from you. And, and, and this guy, in trying, to, in trying to appease his heart, he goes on marrying and marrying and marrying and marrying. And, mm. and for some reason later, somebody comes from the camp of, of Saul saying, I'm coming to join you. And he mm. thinks, well, things might be better. Let me then. Uh, demand what is rightfully mine. So I think yeah. David as king was not complete because his kingdom and uh, the transfer of the kingdom from Saul or from the house of Benjamin to the house of Jesse uh, had to come with the wife. Uh, as per the promise. But I also want to deal a bit, I know that I have not gone uh, deep enough with this one, but I want to leave it because we don't have time. I want to also deal with uh, Abna's defection. And I like how, how you have shown it uh, 
to to be like us defecting from mm. uh, from darkness to the light. Uh, Abna lived in darkness. He lived his mm. life under the shadow of the kingdom of Saul. Mm. Uh, so as a fierce supporter of Saul and his kingdom, he probably might have heard the truth that God is actually transferring the kingdom to, to David. But his loyalty to darkness uh, kept him uh, loyal to, to, to Saul and the, the tribe of Benjamin until he, he was yeah. abused by the darkness. This is what, what actually happens. When we are still in darkness, uh, we, the devil gives us offers, either of promotion, if you sleep with that manager, or of many other things, if you take that multi and mix with that one and so on. Mm -hmm. But he does also to come and accuse you later. Mm -hmm. So uh, as, as part of, because I, I also want to submit that, Faku, uh, there, there are chances that indeed Abna had taken Saul's uh, wife, uh, Saul's mm -hmm. concubine. Mm -hmm. uh, so because there is no way that, that, that he claims that I did not do it, or even the Bible does not exonerate him. He may have done it, but he, he had not expected that that should be a problem now that even that soul is dead and so on. So he, he gets shocked. He gets shocked when now people from the same uh, camp that he is defending are accusing him uh, on such a weak thing. This is how the devil works. Uh, he promises you mm. things, you take them, and he exposes you. He he mm. he, uh, he accuses you of, of those th same things. Uh, this also happens to Saul of Tarsus. <clears throat> but the moment that Saul changed from saving the devil to saving Jesus, God used him much more powerfully than the other disciples that just started up with Christ. So this is what I see in Abna, that his conversion uh, has tangible evidence and has reasons. Why does he defect? And uh, the beauty of the Lord is that David doesn't start by saying, when you knew the truth. Uh, mm. When you defect on the side of the truth, the truth mm. does not does not uh, hold you uh, on and ransom. Mm. And this is what I see, and it's it's a powerful text. Thank you, thank you so so much. Thank you, thank you. And I, I it, it is so fascinating that Abina. While he was in Saul's camp, he he he, he knew that uh, David was God's choice, but he decided to because he wanted to be in power, he wanted to ascend the throne, so he stayed with the camp of Saul uh, until he was accused of this uh, serious crime, and he defeated. How many people who know salvation, who sing songs talking about salvation, and and uh, but they are living in sin, they are their lifestyle is sin, uh, they they don't want to come to Christ even if they know that actually Christ has come to save them. He is the King of Kings and, and the Lord of Lords, but they they stay like that, uh, like Abna. But uh, fortunately, uh, at the end, uh, Abna uh, saw the light. He came to 
to the side of David. He embraced David as the king of Israel. Thank you so much, Mkone, for, for those comments. Uh, are, are there any other comments, friends? Okay, uh, I am happy, uh, Sis Linda, uh, if you are, you are answered. Uh, if 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 your 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 interest on this scripture, uh, corner pick bigger corner. Thank you so much. Um, I think we are, we are coming to the end of our 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 Bible study. Um, I'm not sure if we have not uh, covered the suggested topics. I, I think this was the last one. So those of you who want us to continue with any other topic, uh, bring them on, then we will allocate people to do those or uh, uh, do something about them. So I'm, I'm waiting on you. If we don't have any other topics, I will, I will, I will, uh, we will continue with uh, uh, the, 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 some of the scriptures uh, that we, we have uh, and allocate people. But if you have topics, then we can deal with those. Thank you so much, friends. Uh, for your consistence, for being here, and for your views and engagement and questions. Thank you so much. Tole Kagutanda, the Shomanda Kubrak Dalas. Eh, Tol Mungameli Nabonga Makone Kongeleman Tabati to Mantinibuli Sabas Alane. I'm back, I'm back. I pay Lily I Our Heavenly Father, dear God, you are an awesome God, a wonderful one. Out of nothing, Lord, you made so much. What the Latinaba doens are into a song, who may sell in Kundulo, who is a gossip. Sabule and Gossing and Umsus Pelona, who goes and gossip. Chile, Ubukubako, Bancosi, Isula Colingo, and Cosi Tituam Galimfundis, Tituamona Manta Onke, Easy for Selena, Isenza Sitam, Gencosi, Sigidi, Mesibena Manta, Okubalek, Tituwe to Onamanta, Uba Isula Concosi, Lean to Yoko Cati Sakuti, Ogos and Gossiam, Atamadot. Quebec, a chaff in the lady, God, that now goes to some melons, no good temple, Lucy Laco, about Tabo, but temple, Lucy Laco, about me, Limpico, Bandis and Jungle Coast, Titor, Dunamanda, Onke, Sitalangos, Lucy Laco, Bangos, a good man, Ukushala Gulo, no Bangos, a sea fan, no Bangos, a sea ling, no Bangos, a shooter snack, or no Bangos, whence I can do it. God was his fumana se rich over the chalice from Laco, says Fumana Snobuke, because Obuna Obuke be belly, so Titona Manta Onke, Smule Lutando, who again goes under semi perfum loyeto, see a tempest and goes a source of suke, a source of smoke, who will go see a night and go sabazalane, the says out in get to a pixel's land the lion, Chalum Fadeki Sawak, Kuyo, and Mipum Loyabo, Konukos and Kosi, Bangans, and Lilies, who got to Benze, Uzukola, Kotipona Manta, Unga, Siabula Langum Fonsutati, Siabula Langabazalan, and Bong and Kosi, Ababeka Bukalis, Domaname Konke, and Laya Konkos, and Goba, and was a fan, was ten and get Tabiso, Nangekas, and Kubile and Kosiam, Ubonga, Guetun Kosi, Kyoshes, Gugnan, and Lumosos and Zelo. Kulungulo Tandega and Gobankosi was Pepisi, let to Alus forget to go to Tandega. 
Sneaker and Gosun go cobble way to sneak a langako, conquer snapo, where you are quintan, don't go sustain me, Sagba, Sagbas is tall when a ziki team so seven and lose lacon, go smallis of soak, smallis misses, I use one so can in Conugos as clan as Celebu con in Baco, Stitium Pegas and Laquel Pilay, Gas Laquel Naman, Conugos and Gosse, Sibenome Fuku, will ease when Gosses, Benome Fuku, Wabers, Gosse, Baz and Gosubatina. Amen. 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 Eh, Gwenda, in Ozo, in